Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. We are getting into the cooler time of the year here in Southern California. As I like to say here in Southern California, we really only have two seasons, summer and sort of summer. It's nice here. Um, but anyways, it is cooler outside. It's 62 degrees, burr. <laughs> I love to joke about our weather. So this, and it's kind of raining outside too. It's cloudy. So this is, to me, good soup weather. This is when I like to make soup. I found this recipe in a magazine. I was sitting in the, in the dentist's office waiting for a cleaning, thumbing through a magazine. The person there let me tear out a page. It was for pumpkin soup. And I thought, ugh. Because I don't like pump, I like pumpkin pie, but I've tried baking pumpkin, like good pumpkin, pie pumpkin, and it doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. So I'm going to make butternut squash soup. I'm going to call it butternut soup, and I think it's going to be really fantastic. I'm going to do a, a few variations here, and I'll talk to you about some options you can use. But anyways, let me get into the ingredients I'm going to be using for my butternut soup. The original recipe called for three pounds, which is about 1.3 kilograms of butternut squash, peeled, seeded, and cut into one inch pieces. Oh, and by the way, this recipe said it feeds four people. With this volume of ingredients, I'm gonna say this is at least feed six to eight. I mean, I don't know what they were using for bowls, buckets. And then about five tablespoons of olive oil, salt and pepper to taste. I have one medium onion here that's about 10 ounces or 285 grams. Four to six cups, which is 950 milliliters to about 1.4 liter of chicken stock. This is my homemade stock. I'm probably going to use six cups because I like more of a watery soup. I don't like a really thick soup. If you've seen my, my video and my recipe for my clam chowder, I prefer things to be a more on the liquid side. And then optional, I don't have it here and I'm not going to use it this time, but one thing you can do with this is you can add a cup of heavy cream to make kind of like a cream of butternut squash soup. One optional thing I am going to do though is I'm going to add one cup of artichoke hearts. I have them. I think in this recipe they'll, they will be good. They'll add a little more depth of flavor. Again, this is optional. And then for garnish, like any soup, you can use croutons, crackers, sour cream, sprinkled chives over the top, whatever you like. So those, those are just for garnish. But these here, at least without this, this is the basic ingredients for the soup from which you can start experimenting with alternative options if you'd like. So those are the ingredients. I need to start peeling my squash here. And the easiest way to start is to take this top section off. I'm probably going to have enough with both this top section and the top section. I'll weigh these to make sure that I have my three pounds. If not, I can seed this and use this as well. And then this is a little bit tough to peel. But you just keep working with it and it'll it'll peel. Squash has a really good hard skin on it. I don't know if you can hear that blade working through that peel. I did weigh my pieces of squash here. These were just under three pounds, so that'll be fine. These smaller pieces, these ends, I'll put these in the refrigerator and I'll roast those later on this week. This is all the trim. If you make your own vegetable stock, you can throw the trim in the freezer. And then when you're ready to make stock, just add this to your ingredients and might as well get more use out of it. I need to chop this up next. I want to chop it into one inch chunks. So that's about one inch across, maybe a little bit less. And then just 
same thing about one inch and that's about it's more than an inch that way but that's all right So that'll give you an idea what I'm doing here. Some of these larger ones, I may cut these a little bit smaller so that they cook more evenly. And we get a train going by to prove once again that I do live in a trailer park and not in some fancy house out in the Hamptons. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here? I've got to get these chopped up as well and then I'll be ready to start baking these. So there is all of my chopped squash. I've got some olive oil here. I'm going to drizzle oh, about three tablespoons maybe over this. I'll add more if I need to. I'm going to salt this lightly. I don't like cooking with a lot of salt. I can always taste it for salt afterwards. But I am going to grind some black pepper in there. And then I'm just going to get this all mixed around so that I get all of this squash nicely coated with oil. I've been heating my oven up to 400 degrees. The directions say to roast these until tender, about 20 to 25 minutes. I've roasted enough squash that that timing just doesn't seem right to me. I'm estimating it's going to take double that, but I'll check it for tenderness after about 20 to 25 minutes and then I'll just I'll keep going if I need to, but really I've had enough experience with butternut, butternut squash that I think it's going to go 40 to 45 minutes. The squash is in the oven. I have to peel my onion here and then chop it. The chefs have a way of peeling onions that I don't use. I don't do it their way. What they do is they cut down through the onion in slices, cutting almost down to the root end. You leave the root end on to hold it off, to hold it together rather. Then they cut in this way. That gives me the creepy jeepies, just moving a knife toward my hand like that. In fact, I, I heard from one gentleman who said he cut the tip of his finger off with a chef's knife, cutting an onion that way, and now he uses um, a um, carving fork to hold his onion when he's carving it. I came up with a better way, a safer way that makes me feel safe. Just like the chef's. I cut down through it after quartering it, then I flip it over 90 degrees and cut down through it again so that the knife is staying away from my fingers. And then I go down through it to chop my onion, like so. So that gives me my chop without running the risk of that knife approaching my hand and possibly cutting off the tip of my finger or who knows what else. So that's how I cut an onion. I'm heating a large pot on the pan on the stove here. I put some olive oil in there. What did I use? I used three tablespoons of the five last time. So that's two tablespoons. You know what I mean. You just kind of glug in there what you think you might need. And then Put my onions in there and I'm going to start these sauteing. I've got this on medium high. I want to cook these down until they're more than just tender and translucent. I want to caramelize these a little bit. I don't need to get them really dark. But I want to get them a nice golden color. I did check the, um, the um, squash after 20 minutes. Hard as a rock. So I set the timer for another 20 minutes. That might not even be enough. In the meantime, I'm going to be cooking my onions for about 10 minutes. And then I've got my artichoke hearts here that I've chopped up a little bit more. I'm going to add those for the last 10 minutes and try to break those down a little bit more because they are kind of fibrous. 
and then hopefully that'll mix in well when I go to mix my soup up. My onions have been cooking for 20 minutes. Got a nice fond going there. That's that nice, very flavorful bits in the bottom of the pan. They call that the fond. And I put the um, artichokes in there after 10 minutes. So the artichokes have been cooking for 10 minutes. My squash came out of the oven. This cooked for 40 minutes total to come out nice and tender. I wonder if this is cool enough to handle. Not quite cool enough. Just want to dump that in there. This is all my squash, obviously. Can't quite see what I'm doing working around a camera, so hopefully I'm not getting it all over the stove. No, looks like I'll get it in there. And then I'm going to put in four cups of my frozen stock. That has to obviously melt to make my soup. I'm probably going to add more than four cups, but that's the, that's the way I'm going to start off, and then I'll see what the consistency is. My stock in here has melted, and I can see that this broth is just coming up to a boil. I did melt in the microwave the other two cups of stock. I could have measured, mel melted all four, six cups, rather, in the microwave. But then I would have had to measure to put four cups in. It just made sense to put in four blocks of stock because I know those are each one cup. So as soon as this comes up to a pretty good boil here, I'm going to turn this heat down and let it simmer for probably 10 to 15 minutes before I start whirring it up to smooth out all the ingredients. My soup has been simmering. I have two options for making this smooth. I can work in portions, putting it into a blender and whirring it up in there, or I can experiment with my propeller on a stick, my immersion blender. I'm going to try this first and let's see if I can splatter soup all over my kitchen and my camera. I'll start at low first. Well, so far, so good. Let's try high. Okay, I am feeling as good as the day I lost my virginity. I have never used this for the soup before. Nice. Really, really nice. Naturally, to get this really smooth, I could run this through a sieve, which I might just do in case there's any lumps in there. But, okay, see, there's a lump right there. That's kind of what I was concerned about. But see how that's, how would you describe that? That, to me, is not a soup. I do want to taste it, though. My famous red handle tasting spoon, which does not go into the pan. Aho! Very nice. Need some salt. But I am going to put in my remaining two cups of broth. Because as I mentioned earlier, I want a soup. I don't want a paste. Ah, see, look at that. That, that looks like a soup to me. Much nicer, much better. Get out some salt. And I'm going to put in maybe half a teaspoon, maybe closer to, that's no, about half a teaspoon. Get that stirred in there. See, my chicken broth is homemade and it's unsalted, so. It makes perfect sense, the sense that this was going to need salt. 
Oh, oh. That is heaven on a spoon. Now I'm really feeling like the day I lost my virginity. Okay, I'm going to run this through a sieve. I might just run my propeller in there a little bit more just to see if I can catch any more lumps, but I'm going to run this through a sieve to really smooth this out, and then that'll be ready to eat. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Butternut soup. Oh, I can't wait to put this on the website. I do have a conical strainer, a chinois, but I think this might be too fine a mesh for this particular soup. So I'm just going to work with a regular strainer and just push that through. Yeah, that's going through fine. Nice. And any lumps that are in there will just get pushed through. And that'll assure that my soup will be nice and smooth. Beautiful, just beautiful. See, there's some stuff right there that, some solids that I think that's fiber from the um, artichoke hearts. There it is. A nice big bowl of butternut squash soup or butternut soup. Four people, I don't know, that's a lot of soup. I would say easily six to eight could chow down on this. So I'm going to get some of this into a bowl and then finish up seeing how it tastes and I'm going to sit down and enjoy my bowl of soup. I got an idea while this was baking. I had two of these bottoms from my two butternut squashes. So I cleaned this all out, got all the seeds and the strings out, and I baked these as well for 40 minutes. And then I kind of just trimmed around the top edge there a little bit to make room for the soup to go in there. If I could ladle some soup in. Oh, look at that. So there's my soup in there. Maybe garnish the top with a few toasted croutons. Beautiful. Last step is to see how that tastes. Okay. Now see, this is still a little on the thick side. Imagine how bad this would be if I had put in, left in only those four cups of, of chicken stock. It really needed six. Probably would even benefit from one more cup, but this actually, this looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Let me see how this tastes now that it's cooled down a little bit. Oh, that is heaven. That is so good. It is smooth. It has that nice flavor of the butternut squash, but you can tell that there's artichoke in there just a little bit. The artichoke gives the flavor a little bit of depth, a little bit of complexity. Mmm. Okay. Excuse me. I gotta go enjoy my bowl of soup. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.